Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge. And we're gonna knock out more of the Mansions of Madness Path of the Serpent Monsters here. We're gonna knock out these feathered serpents. They're very colorful. There's a lot of color going on with them, because I guess they're supposed to have sort of like a rainbow-like wingspan. So we're gonna try to emulate that as best as we can here. But without any further ado, let's get to it. So first we started with a layer of moon dust, actually, which is uh, pretty different from everything that we've done so far. If you don't want to just do a single layer across the whole miniature, you can do like a spray primer of any kind. You could use white or whatever. And then you can just go over the body, because all you really want is like the body, you know, the sort of snake coil in the face. But next we're going to dive right into some pure red. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to get the sort of like topmost layer of feathers here on uh, his head, that is. And then we're also going to do some with the wings there a little bit too. Now luckily you don't need to do very much here because there's not a lot to cover. Basically just the sort of like back line of feathers here because we do want to stick to the paint scheme or the color scheme that I think is supposed to be common with the, uh, with the meta of the monster which is bright, colorful, rainbow-like wings and feathers. So just the very back of, of the feathers like that. Yeah, that'd be fine. The very, very top, just like that. And then we're also going to get the tops of the wings here. And you can kind of see the different like layers of feathers almost. There's like a top layer here, a middle layer, and then the bottom layer of feathers. We're just going to get the top layer of feathers here. There you go, a little bit something like that. And you can just kind of kind of think of it as like the sort of back row is going to be all red and it's going to extend up to the wings a little bit. There you go. So just that kind of thing right there. Oh, and I, I, I don't think that I said this at the beginning, but you can just use any brush that you want. You can just use, I'm just using some big fat no-name brush right here, so you can just use whatever's comfortable for you. Luckily, you don't need to worry too much about details, and you can even kind of come up into the next layer a little bit, because uh, we'll just go over all of that with another color anyway. So just do that for both of them. All right, and there we go. So now we've just got our nice, bright, pure red on there. Then we'll take out some crystal blue, and we're basically just going to work our way down from there. So I'll just go to the next layer of feathers here. And just sort of eyeball it, you know, just sort of look for, you know, specific layers and try to just go from there. So a little something like that for the hood. Again, you're just sort of uh, creating another layer of color there. And then the same thing with the wings, just sort of the next layer of wings. We want to have be nice and crystal blue here. All right, so then you got a nice sort of blue layer on there. And that looks pretty cool. We're kind of coming along together pretty nicely. Get that little spot right there. There we go. All right, so just do that for both of them. Oh, I just realized I forgot to get the, the red part on the top of the wings there. Tell you what, that's okay. I'm gonna finish using this blue. And then we'll uh, go back to the red for just a minute. All right, we're gonna rinse that off, and then, like I said, we're just gonna touch up the red on that uh, right wing right there that I just completely messed up, just completely missed. There we go, that's looking great. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that brush off, and then we're gonna move on to some lava orange here. And we're going to use this to just finish out all of the layers of feathers that we haven't done. So we'll just do the, uh, the closest layer of feathers to the head, and then we'll also do the bottommost part of the wings. Just make sure not to go over the scales that are part of their body. Might be kind of tricky to see, but just sort of do your best and anything will be fine, even if you get a little bit of orange onto like the face of the scales. It'll be just fine, don't worry about it. All right, there we go. So that just kind of gets the coil of the of the uh, feathers there on the head. And then, like I said, we'll just finish up the wings here as well with this orange. All 
right. And that's the kind of thing that you want right there. So if you just sort of think of it as like, there, there are layers to things. So if you think of the, the top layer right here, that's gonna be red. And then there's a middle layer that's gonna be a different color. And then the sort of like bottom layer of each wing. Now the thing is you can do whatever color that you want. You could do like red and blue and orange like here, or you could get like a bright green in there. You know, you could use like some green skin or something like that. Uh, you know, whatever whatever color that you like. But I just figured we'll, uh, we'll use these colors because I think it's the most representative of the tile artwork, I think. Yeah, as you can see, there's like sort of a uh, sort of orange, blue, and red there. And I think that that sort of most uh, reflects the tile artwork. So we'll just do that same thing with the other one. All right, and now we've got our nice, vibrant, rainbow-like wings there. And then I'm going to take out some Warlock Purple, and then we're just going to use that to coat his mouth. Because, you know, you just kind of want the, the fleshy pink mouth that a bunch of snakes have. It's the kind of thing that you want there. Don't worry about getting the uh, the fangs. Just kind of worry about, you know, like what I mean by that is don't worry about painting over the fangs. That'll be just fine. Just sort of get the interior of the mouth and the tongue and all of that. All right, and just make sure you get at it from all sides and all angles like that. And there you go, just that nice pink mouth there. Don't worry if you get a little bit kind of coming along the lip, hanging over the lip, anything like that. That'll be fine. Don't worry about it. That'll be A-OK. -okay. So just do the same thing for the other one. All right, and now we've got some nice pink mouths. And the good news is we actually have very little else to do. So what I'm going to do is I'll take out some skeleton bone and we're going to use that for the eyes and the fangs, and then we're going to use our quick shade, and then we're done. I would say just take out a, a detail brush for this, just to make it a little bit easier for the eyes, if nothing else, and just sort of go over. I don't think the eyes are going to be even that much different from the skin tone, but they'll be different enough to where they will stand out a little bit more, just like that. There we go, that for each little eye, like so. I'm going to do that for both of them real quick before I get any further. And we'll just do it again here. Again, the same kind of thing, just kind of nice little dot on each eye. Don't worry if you get a little bit around, you know, surrounding the eye. It'll be fine. All the uh, the quick shade that we use is going to cover up any any tiny little imperfections. All right, and then we are just going to use that one more time. I'll rinse that off, but we don't need a little bitty brush for that. And then uh, we'll, we'll just go back to, you know, a larger brush, and we'll just coat each fang with skeleton bone. And that should make those fangs nice and prominent, I think. All right, and that will about do it for all of the major stuff that we need to do there. As long as we finish with our quick shade, everything should come together come together quite nicely. And we're going to use our go-to strong tone for our quick shade, and that should bring out all of the details and all of the nice shadows and all the nice shade. And once again, we'll just use some big fat no-name brush right here because you don't need to worry about details at all. And you're just going to coat the entirety of each of them. I'll go ahead and do the first one here, kind of show you what it's like. And by the way, if you don't have this exact thing, like if you don't have the Army Painter Mega Paint set uh, that I use for this whole channel, then uh, you could get like a Citadel brand uh, quick shade. You could get a Citadel brand shade. A good one is probably Agrax Earthshade. That would do just fine in this case. And if you don't have that, then just like a black one would work too. So like, uh, you know, if you if you have just dark tone, that would work too. And if you have Citadel brand paints, you could just use Nuln Oil. But, you know, if you can, try to get this, this one with a little bit of a brown tint to it. And that'll be just fine. Right, a little bit something like that. And as you can see, that just brings out all of the scales. Brings out all of the nice little prominent things on the sculpt just makes everything look nice and lively and organic and fleshy and great and that gives you the coloration that you want so you're just going to do that to the other one 
let them both completely dry, and then I will go over each one with a matte varnish as well, just to give it a little bit of an extra layer of protection and to bring the colors together and all that. But that'll be it, then you're done after that. So the big thing that I would say is that after that, that's probably all that you need if all you want is for your miniatures to be table ready. That will probably do just fine. But I figured, why not? Why don't we just go a little bit extra? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the Warlock Purple, and I also got out some Jungle Green and Demonic Yellow, and we're just gonna go sort of back and forth with a dry brush and just sort of touch up onto some different layers. Starting with the Warlock Purple, let's get out a dry brush. Let's load up our dry brush, but wipe off most of it. And why don't we just kind of, uh, you know, lightly go over all of the spots that we did the red for. So we'll start with the, uh, the wings here. You can even get a little bit of it onto the blue that you did, and it actually blends pretty naturally. I would say. It's more uh, obvious on the back here, but you can kind of see, like I said, that Warlock purple blends really well into that blue. You don't want to go just go like completely crazy. You don't want to cover the whole uh, entirety of the blue parts of the wings. But yeah, just kind of go over everything that's red and a little bit of the blue, just like that. And that just kind of adds a little bit of an extra layer there. You can kind of compare the two there. This one's got a little bit of pink on it. This one's got a little bit of red, just a little bit of extra color. All right, a little bit something like that. That's what we want. Then we'll go into our jungle green, and what we're gonna do is we're just going to lightly apply this over bits and pieces of the blue. And that just adds a little bit of a sort of green tint to the wings too. So you've got that blue, you got that green, you're just looking for a nice colorful rainbow sort of look. We'll do the same thing to the top of the head here. There we go, and that just adds a little bit of extra green and color to all of the blue. Now we're gonna rinse off our dry brush one more time, and then we'll get right into that demonic yellow, and we'll just do the same thing with all of the orange feathers, and then that'll pretty much do it. And then if you want to, using this demonic yellow, you might go over the eyes again too, just to bring them out just a little bit more, but that'll pretty much be it. Yeah, if you just use sort of like layers of colors like this, you can get that really cool, nice rainbow-like effect on those wings. All right, there we go. Now we've got some crazy colors going there. All right, and we'll do the same thing with the other one, and then I'm gonna touch up the eyes, like I said just a second ago, and then we're all done. All right, and then we'll just go back to the little small detail brush, and then we'll just dot those eyes one more time. Then I'm going to apply a layer of matte varnish to the entirety of each miniature, just to kind of bring all the colors together, make everything look a little bit more complete. And then I'm all done. There we go, nice yellow eyes. And then, yeah, I'm just going to apply a layer of matte varnish to the entirety of each miniature that will kind of bring the colors together a little bit more. Also, just sort of extend the lifespan of the miniature. And then that's it. And after you get the matte varnish completely dried, that will pretty much do it. So those are the Feathered Serpents from the Mansions of Madness Path of the Serpent expansion. Yeah, I would say if you don't want to worry about the sort of like layers of dry brushing, that come along with the wings on there. You don't have to worry about it. You can just do the solid colors and then apply just a, a single, you know, layer of quick shade afterward and that would be just fine. But, you know, I decided to go a little bit extra just for fun. So that's it, everybody. If you like the video, go ahead and throw it a like. If you want to see the remainder of the monsters from the Path of the Serpent expansion painted, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Next step, I'm going to knock out the Temple Guardians, and I think that those will be pretty straightforward, but we'll just uh, take them as they come. But I won't take up any more of your time, so thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.